Arnana elect. I'm here to give you your mana for today. Um, this is angel's food. It is um, those that are in the spirit, the ones that have left um, spiritual Egypt, the perverse spirit, and went into the wilderness to be fed of the manna that is reserved for them for this time. If you have stumbled upon my video, I ask that you at, you watch the videos in the number that they have been given to me. And um, with the manna, we are to uh, listen to the commands of God. He tells us to take of the manna in the morning, take all of it, do not leave any of it behind, and um, you will get be given uh, manna um, in the morning uh, the next day. So I will start my video. He is coming. Are you ready? Are you strong in the Lord and the power of his might, the word of God only? Have you put on the armor of God to stand against the wiles of the devil, his trickery and deception when his armies are here upon this earth? You will wrestle against Satan and his fallen angels who want to trick you into believing they are angels of light. Are you ready to make that stand with the whole armor of God on for that evil day, the day of Satan's tribulation? Because it's your destiny. It's your calling. This is what you've been born for. Do not doubt who you are in God's army. You are to stand with your loins girded with truth, his word only. The righteousness of Christ will show us the right way. He was tempted, yet he was not deceived, even at his weakest point, 40 days of fasting. He will not send his children out till they are ready. They will no longer be on probation. They will be sent ones, apostles. We are to have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the true wedding of our Lord Jesus Christ, not the false wedding of Satan's apostasy. The shield of faith will be what will quench the fiery darts that he will throw at us of lies and deception. We will stand firm in God's word only. They will be quenched. We must receive the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and we are to pray always with prayer and supplication in the Spirit and all perseverance, perseverance and supplication to all saints. Are you ready? Are you suited? Do not be afraid, for he will go before us and all the host of heaven will be rooting for us. When you see Jerusalem, as in spiritual Jerusalem, this is a spiritual war. You have to see things in the spirit. It's, uh, it's not, Jerusalem is not a geographical area. It's a spiritual condition. Jerusalem is, well, shall be called a city of truth and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. This is a war of the mouse, truth and lies and trickery of Satan and the truth, one truth, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, put up again thy sword into thy place for they, they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels? His, his kingdom is not of this world. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews? But now is my kingdom not from hence. This war will be of the mouse. You have to be in the spirit to know you're even in a war. God is going to open your spiritual eyes to the spiritual realm. He will let you know when they're here. Only you will be able to see this. This is, this is why it is imperative that you are in the spirit. Because if you do not take on the spirit, you will not have eyes to see. 
When you see it surrounded as circled, compassed with armies and as a body of troops, then you will know the desolation as in the desolator as to approach draw near. Right before the devouring stage of the locust army, God will give us an ensign, which is a sign of em, uh, um, emblem of uh, a thing set up, a standard, as a flag, a signal, a token which is a vis visible, tangible representation of a fact. Um, Stay not, for I will bring evil as a mark of affliction, distress, adversity from the north, as in gloomy, as in dark, oppressing or frightening, hidden, as to keep out of sight, concealed from, from view, as an unknown evil characteristic, a hidden knowledge, mysterious, absent of light. This token, this signal, will be blackbirds. There will be a few at first, but then they will take over the sky. Everywhere you look, you will see blackbirds. That will be your signal that the spiritual realm has opened up on the earth. The locust army is here. They will then search out the flesh to devour it because they're flesh eaters, the devourers of the flesh, the, uh, as in the spiritual dead. That is why we cannot be of the flesh. We have to take on the spirit. They, the spiritual dead, they are not in the spirit. They don't have the spiritual armor. Because they feed on the flesh, we are to remove of the flesh, taking on the spirit, which is Emmanuel, God with us. This happens at the marriage feast when we unite with Christ in the marriage, ta taking off of our flesh, our Gentile bodies, to the spirit, the celestial bodies. You cannot stand before these entities in the flesh. They are supernatural. They will devour you. You have to be of the spirit to fight them on even ground, spirit to spirit. When they are released upon this earth, they are supernatural. They will have to inhabit a flesh body. They are coming to consume, devour, take it over. God is telling, remember the sons of God of Noah's time. They came in and married. Christ is um, becoming one in spirit with his children. So Satan is going to try to come up against that god is telling you this in advance to let you know that this prophet it what this prophet is saying will come to pass and this prophet can be trusted when this cometh to pass and it will come then you then shall you know a prophet has been among you when the word of the prophet shall come to pass then shall the prophecy be known that the lord has truly sent him we are to prepare for this great army, the spiritual battle, by putting on our gospel armor, the marriage garment, the tov, the seal. This comes at the visitation of the marriage feast. I explained of this marriage in the introduction video, my first video. Listen to them in their numbered order. You must take on your spiritual armor, the marriage garment, to take on this army that is coming. First uh, Samuel 17:4. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath. Goliath means splendid, also intoxicating as Lucifer, of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he, had ar he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had, uh, he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. Um... And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. He had six weapons for the spear, weighing six shekels of iron, six as in the number of the full flesh beast. And he stood, and he cried unto the armies of Israel, and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array, meaning a range in order? Am not I a Philistine, and you servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. We are not servants of a man-king. We are servants to the, to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
and we are we will not be of the flesh we will be of the spirit if he be able to fight with me and to kill me then we will be your servants but if i prevail against him and kill him then shall you be our servants and serve us and the philistine said i defy defy means to blasphemy defame the armies of israel this day give me a man that we may fight together that is why we are not to be man we are to be of the spirit when saul and all israel heard these words of the philistine they were dismayed and they were greatly afraid now david was the son of ephrathite of bethlehem judah whose name was jesse and he had eight sons and the man went among men for an old man in the days of saul judah being those that are one in christ for you brethren have become followers of the churches of god which are in judea which are in christ jesus judah is a lion's whelp from the prey my son i have gone up he stooped down he crouched as a lion and as an old lion who shall raise him up as to arise establish stand up judah are those being one in christ God's elect will raise up first and take on the spirit. They will take of the marriage, becoming one with Christ first, and then they will witness to the 144,000 that will bring about the fullness of the Gentiles. Eight meaning new beginnings, new order of creation, man's true born again event. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle, and the names of his three sons that went to the battle was Eliab, the firstborn, and next unto him Abinadab, and the third Shammah. Eliab meaning God of his father, Abinadab meaning father of generosity. And David was the youngest, and the three eldest followed Saul. David is the youngest representant of God's elect that will be born last, but of the first day. David representing of our high priest Melchizedek, Melka, king Zadok priest king of the zadok that will go first then will lead the elect to the battle by stepping out first in the spirit and david went and returned from saul to feed his father's sheep at bethlehem david tended his sheep as a pastor and the philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days 40 days of standing for probation when god's elect take on their spiritual man that is when satan will come to them to tempt them in the wilderness just as christ was after his baptism when he took on the holy spirit and jesse said unto david his son take now for thy brethren an ephah of his parched corn and these ten loaves and run to the camp to thy brethren ephah is a measure for grain and ten meaning testimony law responsibility completeness of order David is bringing the brethren the testimony. It will come through the line of Judah, through the high priest Melchizedek, that will then take it to the elect. And carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand, and look how thy brethren fare, and take their pledge. Now Saul and they, all the men of Israel, were in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines, this being the devouring stage of the locusts. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to fight and he shouted for the battle. He rose up early in the morning. God's elect are early risers and the two witnesses will rise first, the high priest Melchizedek. For Israel, the Philistine, had put the battle in array, the army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the battle, and he came and saluted his brethren. Carriage as something prepared, as a dress, an armor, as in the marriage garment, the gospel armor. And he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. Goliath as in splendid, intoxicating one, Lucifer. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, they fled from him, and they were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up, surely to defy Israel? Is he come up, and it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, and will give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. 
And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God? Uncircumcised is the full flesh man, the 666 man, without the spirit. Defy is to, is to defame blasphemy, the armies of the living God, as in God's elect of the full spirit, the 777. And, it, and the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why comest thou down hither? And whom has thy left these few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thy heart, for thy art come down that thy mightest see the battle. This is the eldest brother, the firstborn of the flesh, the Gentile, not the firstborn of the spirit. He was angry against David, telling him, Who do you think you are? You're just a sheep herder. What brings you forth to fight this battle? When God's two witnesses step forth, they will not be accepted by those of the flesh. There will be jealousy among the brethren also when the elect will come forth. And um, let's see where I was at. Twenty-eight. And David said, "What have I now done? Is is there not a cause?" And he turned from him toward another, and he spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former ma manner. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul. And he sent for him, and David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with the Philistines. And Saul said to David, Thy art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thy art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep there, and, and there came a lion and a bear, and I took the lamb out of the flock. This is symbolic of the political beast. God's two witnesses will take the, take the um, God's children out of the beast's mouth. And I went out after him, and I smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth when he arose against me. And I called him by his beard, and I smote him and slew him. Caught as to be strong, conquered, delivered it out of his mouth. The war will be of the mouse. Lies, deceit, repent, are all come to you quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. And if any man hurt them, fire will proceed out of their mouths and devour their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. God's elect will be pulled out of this political system of lies by the two witnesses, the voice of our high priest Melchizedek. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Their system will receive a deadly wound. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the Paul of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord will be with thee. David knows the power of his God. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head, and also he armed him with the coat of mail, having the armor as in Goliath. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and as he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off of him. This is not a physical war. You will not fight this battle with physical means, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world. He is not trained in man's fighting. He is trained spiritually. And he took his staff in his hand, and he chose him five small uh, stones out of the brook and he put them in a shepherd's bag which he had even in a scrip and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine he took the staff in his hand the staff is a rod of correction that Moses was to take representing the law and he chose five 
uh, smooth stones, five representing grace, the shepherd's bag as an armor, as the gospel armor, and the sling as the door, the opening, the door of grace. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and a fair countenance disdained as despised the spiritual man god will use the weaker to take down satan when the locust army are released upon this earth they will seek out god's children that are in the spirit they will be extremely hostile towards us that is why we are to be in the spirit to stand against them on even ground they are coming here to devour flesh if you are in the flesh you will be devoured by them and the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thy comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, and to the beasts of the field. When God's two witnesses and his elect step forth to the battle, they will not be of the flesh. They will be of the spirit. They, have take, they will have taken off their flesh at the marriage, putting on the spiritual man, the celestial. That will be their armor against them. Then said David to the Philistine, Thy comest to me with the sword and with the spear and with the shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thy has defied. Host as in the angelic host that will join with God's elect. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day into the fowls of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is God in Israel. Deliver means to shut up his mouth. It will be shut up. Take thy head, be the head, not the tail. This is when God's seed will bruise thy head. This is when he sends the fowls to feed and to the supper. And I saw an angel standing in, the, in his son, and he cried with a loud voice, saying, All the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together for the supper of the great God. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with a sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give it into our hands. The battle will be the Lord's. It will be of words by the mouths, and theirs will be shut. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hasted and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. He didn't walk. He ran. He wasn't afraid. And David put his hand in his bag, and he took thence a stone, and he slung it, and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk in his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. He only needed one stone, because he is one with Jesus Christ, and the battle is the Lord's, and the Lord shall be king over all the earth in that day. There shall be one Lord in his name, one forehead is where your brain is he will not be able to use his wisdom against his children thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty thy has corrupted thy wisdom wisdom by reason of thy brightness i will cut thee to the ground so david prevailed over the philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the philistine and slew him but there was no sword in the hand of david the one stone being jesus christ through his two witnesses and god's elect Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheep thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. The head of the snake is cut off. And the men of Israel and Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines until they come to the valley and to the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way of Shearim, even unto Gath, even unto Ekron and the children of Israel returned from Chasen after the Philistines and they and they spoiled their tents and David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem but he put his armor in his tent Jerusalem being spiritual Jerusalem where truth will be found in his tent his tabernacle uh, Jeremiah 312 
Go and proclaim these words towards the north and say, Return thou backsliding Israel, says the Lord, and I will not cause my anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, says the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Return as in the first day when we were celestial. Jacob returned again to Bethel, Mount Moriah, the staircase to the celestial. In those days, in the those days the house of judah judah are those that are in christ jesus one with christ of the spirit for you brethren have become followers of the churches of god which are in judea which are in christ jesus mount zion the city of truth this is not a geographical late location but a spiritual condition this war is spiritual jesus is spirit and you must be in the spirit to receive your battle commands after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor any tree, nor nor any tree. And the rain ascended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house as an abode family, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out onto the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. When the four winds are released, this brings the spiritual realm. Where, wherefore is loosed in heaven will be loosed on earth. When this happens, we will be in a spiritual battle. We will need to discern spiritually. The right side is the right side of righteousness and power. And he took him by the right hand, and he lifted him up as to awaken. This is being awakened spiritually to the supernatural realm. And immediately his feet and his ankle, ankle bones received strength. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, the vessel. We are his vessel. We are one body, and you will find as to perceive, see, and they cast as to arise. Therefore they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes, as in similar characteristics, as in a relationship by a marriage becoming one in the flesh, one body. And he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and what? whatsoever is right i will give you and they went their way and they said unto him because no man has hired us he says unto them go you also into the vineyard and whatsoever is right that shall you receive who is wise and and he shall understand these things and prudent and he shall know them for the ways of the lord are right and the just shall walk in them but the transgressors shall fall therein a wise man's heart is at his right hand, but a fool's heart is at his left. I have set the Lord, Lord always before me, because he is on my right hand. I shall not be moved, and now I know that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the, with the uh, song, the saving strength of his right hand, that my beloved may be delivered. He led them forth by the right way that they might go to the city of habitation. Thou, I walk in the midst of trouble. Thy will revive me. Thy shall stretch forth thy hand against the wrath of my enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. He shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats as in the wicked people on the left. Fear thy not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, bewildered, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, I will help thee, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. For the Lord thy God will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Show thy marvelous kindness, O thou that save us by our right hand. Them which put thy trust in thee, those that rise up against thee, my soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. A thousand shall fall at my side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee, that thy belief may be delivered. Save with thy right hand, and answer me, and they shall hear a, a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk you in it, when you turn to the right, and when you turn to the left. You are given a choice. There are voices telling you which way to go. You are to listen to the command of Jesus Christ. He sits on the right hand side of the throne. He is our high priest, our chief commander. If he tells you to go right, you are to go right. 
There will be other voices trying to persuade you to go left, but you are not to listen. They cannot force you. They can only persuade you. When you are in the spiritual realm, everything will be different because your senses are now opened up to another realm. You are then to discern you are not to put your trust in your fleshly senses. Only by the middle voice and the commands of the Holy Spirit, you will see visions with your right eye. You will hear with your right ear. You will turn to the right and walk to the right. There are two spirits, the ones that will persuade you to go left. You, you, are, you will discern their hostility, hostility towards you. They are not of God. Then there are the spirits that will lead you to the right. Do not be afraid of them. They are here to guide us. Each of these spirits cannot force us. We have to make the choice of what voice we are to listen to. Do not be afraid. We are given power over them through the blood. Through his blood, we have the power over the waters. The spiritual body has blood and water. Through his blood, we have power over waters because we have the living waters in us. That is our power. You will not be able to do nothing on your own. You will be devoured. Trust in his commands. Go to the right and he will be there until the morning elect have a good day